Legends Lounge presented by Booking.com. Welcome to the Legends Lounge and I'm Rio Ferdinand. And I'm Roman Kemp. Roman, listen man, let me just throw a couple of words at you. Mm. Technical ability. Oof. Vision. Oof. Creativity. Oof. Versatility. Oh. Set beast specialist. Oh. The touch, man, is a joke. Professionalism. <laughs> I can go on, you know. Yeah, I know. But man, listen, our guest today, he, he embodies all of these qualities. A true student of the game. This is the gentleman of gentlemen. Mm. Go on, you go. Take it away. Come on, give me some yeah. more. Well, I thought you were talking about me for a second. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but you're talking about our guest. But absolutely, Rio. Uh, renowned for his intelligent play, technical excellence and consistent creativity in midfield. And let's not forget his Euro pedigree, scoring in the Euro 2012 final with a stunning 4-0 victory over Italy. We are thrilled to welcome Mr. Juan Matter. Juan, welcome to Legends Lounge. Thank you. Was all of that me? Yeah, yeah. all of that was you. Yeah, exactly. We had to cut it down. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we did have to cut it down. Um, just, just quickly, because uh, I'm trying to do a little bit of my maths here, because when, when we were, you know, doing our research, did, did you two overlap at, at Man United? Because mm. Rio, you left in 2014, mm. and then Juan, you joined the same year. So yeah. was there a crossover period? Yeah. Yeah. Because I arrived in January. Yeah. And you left at the end of the season yeah, in yeah. June. So, yeah. yeah, I was I was dying at that time on my way out. I was going to say body had shut down at that point. <laughs> yeah, was, was, did, was, did Rio train at all at that point? <laughs> or? Well, we were actually next door in the locker room. Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't see him much. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. I was hiding. Does that happen when you're when you're coming more towards the, the end of your your kind of tenure or your or end of your career? Does mm. the manager give you a little bit more leeway? Oh no, you don't have to train today. No, uh, yeah, you get more of a you know you know your body, so you just say like, listen, but boss, maybe today's the day I will just stay off. I, I didn't really do that often, but I just I just couldn't train yeah. as often as I wanted to, and I couldn't play as much as I wanted to either. So yeah, yeah the last couple of seasons were difficult, but. It was interesting to see the transition from obviously Sir Alex Ferguson and David Moyes comes in and the new players are coming in. Yeah. And listen, immediately when he come through the door, he, he, everyone's going like, whoa, my, he's got tech. Yeah. He, he's, his feet are beautiful. I was going to say, Juan, when you joined Man United and you know everyone's talking about this amazing defender, Rio Ferdinand, and you're just skinning him thinking, who's this old man? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, but, but, but would you have enjoyed to have played at, at you know, Rio's peak time at, at Manchester United as well? Yeah, I would have loved that. Uh, yeah. When I arrived to... To the club, you were there, Bida was there, Bidic. Yeah. And of course, I remember them playing together at their best. And um, I would have loved to be with them in that team. Hmm. Well, look, it is England versus Spain. So as much as you two are friends, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of tension. He's so confident, it's unreal. <laughs> he's so confident. I spoke to David De Gea yesterday, yeah? yeah. And he went, uh, easy. <laughs> Easy. That's what he said. So I mean, well, okay. Well, let, let's talk. Let's talk before we get into your career, Juan. Let, let's talk about it. I mean, how how confident are you in Spain's uh, winning ability? Uh, yesterday I was very confident. Today I'm confident. Tomorrow, let's see. I no. think when the game when the game comes, uh, you get more nervous. But I think um, Spain has deserved to be in the final um, so much. I think they played very good football every game. So hopefully, my hope is that they can play the same level of of the other games. And I think if they do that, they will be closer to win. But I mean, I'm, I'm joking. I'm not that confident. England has, of course, a, a big chance with the players that you have. Mm. Uh, how, um, when you look at the team, who's excited you when you've watched this team and you feel that like the important players now in this team? You know what? I think everyone is playing almost at their best level, uh, mm. which that's great for the team. But if you think about specific moments, five, six players had specific games where they actually made a difference and of course um Lamin, Jamal it's just incredible with, with how, how are they talking about him over in Spain because obviously nah, we, we we're, we're talking lavishly about him but what about you guys in nobody Spain? <clears throat> nobody can understand what he's doing um because he's playing at an unreal level but if you think about his age I mean when we were 16 it's, I can't imagine <laughs> I cannot imagine myself half of, of that player that he is but it's not only him it's Nico Williams in the other side it's Dani Olmo finding the pockets it's mm. Fabian and Rodri in the middle mm. it's Laporte from the back I think everyone is playing at a very very high level do you think uh, in the Spanish media do you think they're kind of almost seeing it like the team is overperforming, or was this kind of what was expected I don't think there was very high expectations about what Spain could do, could do in the in the tournament, especially because everyone was talking about France, Portugal, England. Mm -hmm. Spain is a young team. 
with a coach that has been there for some time, but uh, not so long. So, yeah, people in Spain and myself were, okay, we, maybe we have a chance, but let's see how France, how do the others do. Mm. And I think the others didn't do so well. Um, I think Spain played at, uh, at a very high level and all the teams maybe underperformed. And all combined, of course, um, Spain deserves to be mm. in, in this final. But Rodri, for me, is the most important player in football for me at the moment. Yeah. Right. And and what's what's your view? Because you've played with some fantastic central midfield players mm. who mm. who controlled games like Busquets, mm. like Xabi Alonso. Mm. Where does Rodri fit around those type of players? Do you think? Oh, he could be. He could be in in that national team. Yeah. Mm. He could be. I think. Right now, like you say, he's probably the most important player in Spain. Uh, of course, for Man City, he's instrumental. He is the best player in, in that position, in, in, in his form right now. Um, so, very, very good player. Also, very nice guy. I think mm. he's, he's also very important for, for the team outside the pitch, in the dressing room in okay. Spain, with his experience and, and personality. So, yeah, very, very important. My, my big question around Rodri, right? Does Rodri get into the Spain Euro 2012 team? In the squad, for sure. Not in the team? <laughs> in the, you mean in the 20, yeah, no, yeah, in the 2012? Where, yeah. when we were, I mean, when you have Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, Xavi Alonso, <laughs> but he would be in the squad for sure. Yeah, you have and, to bench him though. Got to bench him. <laughs> That's unreal, isn't it? That, uh, you is that, can you just give me a little bit on like, on Busquets? Because... I don't, the younger kids, that he's not the one that they always talk about. Mm. Like, is it, have you got any nice memories or stories about like how good this guy was? Yeah, because he makes he makes the difficult things look so easy. And like you say, he's not uh, beating players one mm. against one. He's not scoring so many goals. So, but his decision making and his awareness is just incredible. Because he's not, yeah, he's not very quick in movement, but his quickness in thought is just unbelievable so mm. that uh, squad like in training sessions for example one one touch possession nobody loses the ball one touch possession is, is difficult in your squad the two in, in Spain yeah we were training wow. and then then I realized <laughs> this is like I really need to be on this because if yeah, you yeah. lose the ball you really stand out as well. <laughs> so nobody missed a touch in a one touch possession for 10 minutes wow. and I was like okay Good. It's crazy because we went for food last night yeah. with uh, Fernando Llorente, and um, who's a great guy, by the way. He was in this in your squad mm. for the was it the World Cup squad, yeah. And he was saying that when he turned up, he said, "I'm looking on on my team, and I've got Xavi, I've got Iniesta, I've got all these guys like yourself." He said, and the speed at which they were playing, mm. he said, he said I had to go back to my room and really focus and think about how I'm not going to look stupid because it was so <laughs> quick and so like different level from what is club football. It's yeah. It's crazy. Man. I, I, I have to say, I've seen some of the clips of the, the Spanish national team and their kind of training and how it differs from, you know, the England team and, and our training. It's very much like ball focused, like they have a drill where they're like doing little keepy uppies all the way to the cones and then take the cone run back. How obsessive is a Spanish team in training over just pure ball control and pure passing? Very much. <clears throat> and it's not only in the senior team, it's also in the academies. Mm. In all academies in the national team, as long as they put a ball there, they can make you do anything. And it mm. happens with all football players. So the decision making, the first touch, the positioning of yourself, the thinking before receiving the ball, all of these things that you really cannot measure with stats, um, we train a lot. We got uh, told that they are very important in football, and and I agree. Um, you know, you know, just to go back to um, Lamine Yamal, um <coughs> was he a player that everybody knew about in the country? About f when he was 10, 11, 12 or whatever. Uh, he's been playing over his age for many years. So he won the, with the Spanish national team. He won the Euros nine and the nineteen or something like that, or seventeen when he was fifteen. So <laughs> he's been already very much ahead, but nobody could expect this like mm. playing for Barcelona every weekend doing what he's doing in the Euros with 16 years old um, and I think of course he's, he's 16 years old he's a kid but maybe that age makes him fearless mm. right mm. maybe at that age yeah. we didn't know man. he's not overthinking everything I think he's just playing you know and enjoying and that might be an advantage when you uh, 
look at the England team. Who, who's impressed you so far in the tournament when you, you've watched? Uh, well, I think some of the players had moments. And of course, I know that some people in England are not happy with the way uh, the, the English team is playing, which I can understand. Um, I really liked, for example, the substitutions. I think they're mm. adding things with Ivan Tony, with mm. uh, Watkins, with Cole Palmer the other day. I think they're bringing things to the team. And when you have players like Saka, uh, Phil, Jude, Harry, mm. they can be playing better or worse, but they have the ability to win a game in one split second, mm. like it happened yeah. with Saka, uh, the last goal, with Jude, with the bicycle kick, with uh, with experience with with Harry. So I, I really, I, I, I'm not as confident as I told you yesterday, <laughs> because I really think that the English team wants to show also, right? That we had so many criticisms, nobody wanted or nobody thought that we could arrive and then we are here, we're going to show everyone that playing better or worse, we can win mm. after so many years. Yeah. And they have, I feel they have this fire inside mm. and, and the coach... This makes too. them dangerous, huh? For sure. For I, sure. I, I, I have to say, you know, speaking to yourself, you're, you're kind of like almost the first like, real Spanish fan that we're, we're talking to leading up to the final. What player, when you watch England play, when you're going to watch the game, mm -hmm. when they receive the ball, which player are you going, <sighs> dangerous? Phil Foden. Mm. Phil Foden, really? Do you see a bit of yourself in him? Uh, I wish right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love this kind of player, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the Phil Fodens, the Bernardo Silvas, the Odegaard. This type of player I love. And of course, in England, Phil, his, I mean, the season that he had, it was incredible. Uh, he's still at, at, at not so old age and he's won mm. so many trophies. And yeah, of course, some people I know, they're saying he's not performing at the same level as Man City. But mm. of course, you need the environment around you to play at your best level when you're a player like him or like me, that we need players around to yeah. play and move and, and, and pass. But I think he's dangerous. And when he receives in those little pockets and he can fire the shot, how important is that? You just touched on that point there, which is really, really important about needing team, needing the teammates for you to perform. Mm. It, how frustrating can it be when you you feel that you, you know you've got the ability, but the team isn't producing and setting it for you to be able to produce your best work? Yes, I mean you all need, or we all players need uh, the environment around us to be favorable, to mm. to flourish. Um, we're talking about Rodri. If you put Rodri in a different team with different teammates that play different football, he will not be as good as he is. Mm. Xavi and Iniesta, they were magnificent because they played in a system with Barcelona and with a national team that was them. Yeah. Now, if you play in a different style than your team, then you either have to adapt that you you do as a professional player, but it's more difficult to, to reach your top, top level. So... It's really, really important. And sometimes, you know, people were criticizing Messi in Argentina mm. years ago because he doesn't play the same way as in Barcelona. Now, mm. He cannot. Mm. It's just difficult to do that. So um, we shouldn't underestimate the, the rest of the team. Talk, talking about adapting, and we can't have you sitting here as a Spanish legend without asking you about Jude Bellingham's impact in Spain. <clears throat> massive. Massive. Um, not only on the pitch, but off the pitch too. I, I, t I told you yesterday, I'm really impressed with him. Uh, of course, what he's done for Real Madrid is scoring. He has this capacity of scoring important goals in important times, right? Like the clutch, mm. uh, clutch time. So mm. he's done that in his first season. Um, he's won trophies in his first season, the biggest trophies you can win. Very impressed. And off the pitch, his interviews after the games in Spain, he's mm. really respected and I really like he. he really looks mature for his age mm. um, everyone is really impressed but of course Barca fans are not happy <laughs> <laughs> are not happy with that but they are very happy with Lamin now. how dangerous is Nico Williams as a player to have he has been very very dangerous in this in this um, Euros I mean Rio is a defender I don't think he will like to be one against one with him he's nope. so quick so fast. he's probably the quickest in, in the team direct and he's so direct he just mm. puts the ball there and, and, and beats you and he's also improved a lot his decision making mm. uh, which is difficult when you go at such speed very good and he's only what 21 22 yeah, so mm. he looks older <laughs> compared to to Lamille 
they're both very young. And I think that the coach deserves credit for finding these two weapons there. Mm. Because they're very young and it's not easy to put young players and to find the balance of the team with Dani Olmo, with Rodri, with Fabian. It feels that everyone is really connected to each other mm. and it really feels like a team. Yeah. For me. I, I think maybe if, without him having his roles in the under 17s and under mm. 19s, 20s mm. and winning with, with the Spanish uh, youth teams, he may the, the manager may not have found or trusted these young players. So for he definitely sure. deserves a big credit for that, doesn't he? For sure. Because yeah. he, he had Fabian before, he had Nico before, he had everyone before. So mm. he knew what they could give. They only needed the chance and the confidence. Well, Juan, you are in the Legends Lounge. And there was one thing that you had to take on, which I know you were more scared about than probably the Euro final. <laughs> that is the darts. And here is how Juan Mata got on. Welcome. Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him to come and I didn't mention this. Yeah. Like, well, he, might, he might not come. <laughs> it's a nine dart challenge. Everyone who's come through has done a nine dart challenge. Let me know what you got. <sighs> if I hit do you want to warm up or are you all right? If I hit the board, I'm happy. No, I know warm up. Okay, cool. <laughs> right. One. Nah. Two. Oh, wait, 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 17, that's well, 19. What is it? And 13, 32. 32, you're all right. That's a good first score. <laughs> serious, no, no, it was. No, no, serious, wait till you see When see you see my score, you'll know. Yeah. You see the 20 there? <laughs> oh, Ooh. five. 37. Oh, no! Okay, 42. Oh! What was that? No. Triple no, three, 42. It's a triple three. 51. Oh, oh no. It's oh. Oh no, Juan, this has to, this Man, has you to need be to big. go, you need to get... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 70s, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Come on. What's the score, 50? Oh, he's done well. Is it well. 18? Go on. Yeah, he's done well. Oh, yeah, he's done well, he's done, he's done well. Someone say the score, right. what was it? 12? 20, 18, 51. and 12. 101. Oh, well done. You got you, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well done, well done. You saved yourself there. Yeah, exactly. You saved yourself there. Little right. last minute one. Let's go next door to sit down where you're more comfortable. Let's go. Juan Mata, 101. I you am, clawed it back in the end there. I am very happy with that. Because <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about 50, 55. Yeah. But you are underneath <clears throat> Cesc Fabregas' 110. I'm not happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Can we do it again? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, Rio, we need to talk about uh, Juan's career. Because, yeah. I, I mean, absolutely sensational. Um, let's get straight into it. You scored in the final dream of, of, of a Euros. What's it, when the ball hits the back of the net, mm. do you think in your head, I'm in history? Um, I, I think yes and no. I, I don't know what I thought. I was just... Uh, so happy and uh, I just ran to Fernando Torres because <laughs> I remember the goal and, and it was a great pass from Xavi to Fernando and he I think he could have scored himself but I screamed so much <laughs> from behind and he passed the ball to me without looking at me so I could only put it in the in the net without uh, Buffon he was beaten and I just went to him and said it's yours it's yours yeah, whatever and that photo is nice so um, it was nice to, to score that last goal that in a way, closed the circle of that Spanish national team generation, uh, mm. having won the Euros, the World Cup, and the Euros again. And so, yeah, I mean, my friends, my family, the whole country was watching. It was good. How, how did that change your life? You know, like you, you score an important goal like that and you win such a prestigious trophy like um, this. <clears throat> I would say that uh, being in that national team <clears throat> changed my life. And also the goal. <clears throat> Sorry. Right. But um, everyone in Spain was just... Um, so loving to all of us, to the 23 that we were there. Mm -hmm. So, of course, scoring the last goal in that Euros against Italy also, it was fantastic. Uh, but it was more the whole experience with the national team over the, all the years that changed my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it is, it's an incredible thing to be able to do. Talk to me about that team. What was it like? I don't know, in, in the tournament, because you were so, so good, weren't they? Yeah. They were just absolute joke. I mean, was it, was it good? Yeah, was it good vibes in the camp the whole time? What What's it like <clears throat> in a Spain camp? That was the best thing. The best thing is that as good as the players were, the egos were aside, they were mm. humble. We were a fam. I, I promise we were a family. Like Because we yeah, you had the Real Madrid Barcelona problems in during that time, or a little yes, bit before that there time, didn't there, you? There was, a, I think, uh, I don't know if during or before, but um, there was a time where there was tension. Yeah. Uh, but they sort 
Iker and Xavi. They're super good friends. They were both captains. They sorted everything with, with Vicente, the coach. But aside from that, I tell you that it, we were friends. Like I'm Because we were for so many years, more or less, everyone together. And we were winning and everything was fine. That was key for, for the success of the of the national team. But the best example that I can put about the level of that team is that on, in goal, we had Iker Casillas, Victor Valdez, and yeah. Pepe Reina. And after David. <laughs> So David came yeah. after, and it's like, her, yeah. <laughs> it is absolutely. Joke. What what's it like? Like uh, fun. What do the guys do for fun in, in the Spanish team in the in the camp? Like I'm just trying to imagine that uh, that team. Has someone got a guitar out? What's a lot. The deal? There was a lot of cards, a lot of uh, ping pong, like table tennis, yeah. which which I loved. A lot of music, a lot of. Uh, I mean, they played poker so much. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Who's at, who's at the poker Gerard, table? Gerard, Gerard, Gerard Pico. Yeah. Gerard really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gerard was playing, David Silva was playing, Iker was playing, Pepe Reina also. Pepe Reina is. Was, was, was Gerard still crazy? Because I remember he was crazy when we was young. Uh, I don't know how crazy he was, <laughs> but he was kind of still. <laughs> uh, yeah, very funny, funny guy. Yeah. It's, it's, go on. Go on, there you go. No, go on, you go. I was, I was just going to say, because... You're so excited, man. <laughs> yeah, because that team was just <laughs> so good. Like, I, I'd, like I, I've, I've got so many questions, like... Who was the best trainer? Like you know, in in that in that team, I know it's a basic question, but but who was the best? When you got on the training field, you were like everyone was like wolf that trained well every day and yeah. was there early and all this high level, high level. Um, Sergio Ramos, really, always, always at the very high level, um, and also preparation after tra very very professional. Fernando Torres also very very professional. Um, Arbeloa, oh, yeah. Arbeloa, Arbeloa, yeah. Arbeloa, Arbeloa, yeah. Arbeloa. I mean, nobody was really uh, one of these players that don't like to train, that mm. likes to... Everyone was kind of tuned within each other and everyone enjoyed so much trainings and games that we all wanted to be there. We mm. didn't want to miss. What's, yeah. what's it like when you're in a squad and you, the position that you play, you can play in a position where you've got absolute greats. It was impossible to play. Like, what, what's that feeling like? Because there'll be players now in the squads who are sitting in the background a little bit thinking, when's my chance? But then yeah. you, you have your moment. Yeah. What's it like when you're you're sitting behind those guys like Iniesta, like Xavi, mm. etc.? It's it's interesting because in one side, of course, it's I will have never changed anything um, about being in that generation. But in the other side, it was difficult to play mm. because I was 21, 22, 23. And there were the Chavis, Iniesta, Busquets, and then, I mean, bear in mind there was Cesc, Silva, Santi Cazorla. It was myself. And, <laughs> Joke. and so yeah. there was a queue. There was a queue there, and uh, it was difficult to play. So I went to many more games than the ones I played. Mm. So that was frustrating at the time because when you're doing good for your team and you're playing in Valencia and Chelsea, United, you're doing well, and then you don't get. Yeah. A lot of time in the national team, it can be frustrating. So mm -hmm. sometimes I wish, oh, why I'm in the same age of them? Because mm -hmm. maybe I could have played more. But no, I, I prefer to be with them and enjoy my time in the national mm -hmm. team with such greats. This this is like fantasy, yeah. Yeah. And just uh, touching on fantasy, you're, yeah, you're killing the fantasy football league, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am. Yeah. He plays. He's obsessed with fantasy football. Okay. League. You know the fantasy yeah. football team, yeah, yeah. right? So 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 we've been doing it <clears throat> on uh, uh, on the Euros app, the the fantasy league. And yes, I am absolutely killing Rio. Um, I haven't looked at my team since I started. <laughs> really. Well, I, 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 let me just bring this up here. So I'm actually in the top 1500 in England. So I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> but but I need I need a couple of Spanish players to put into uh, the fantasy team. Who are going to be the most important players? Let's leave out Rodri, because okay. that's obvious. Okay. Who are going to be the most important players that I need to put in my fantasy team for this game? If I was you, I would put Danny Olmo. Danny Olmo, mm. yeah. And you know what? I would put Morata. Really? Mm. Yeah, I would put Morata because like in England, people have been criticizing Morata um, a lot. And I think maybe it's a moment in which he scored an important goal and puts everything to, to bed. Yeah. Ooh. Morata's going in the team then. <laughs> Gonna, I'll, I'll put him in the team. Do you know what? I, I have to say, this is not just a plug. I've absolutely loved uh, how you know UEFA and the Euros have been able to do uh, the new fantasy football. Very good. Captaincy selection, sub-use. So Morata's going to go in there 100%. Okay. 
on Morata. Did you see the other day that the, the Spanish team were doing uh, 1v1s? The Spanish team, instead of you know doing their regular training, they thought, let's do a 1v1 tournament. Everyone in the squad. Okay. The winner of that, Morata. Was he? Morata won the I 1v1. Against Nico Williams. I know exactly. that. I guess, I I guess, uh, the, final, the final was <clears throat> Lamin Yamal <clears throat> versus... Alvaro Morata, Morata skinned him. Did he? Absolutely Where skinned him. Where did you him. see this? It's all over online right now. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Even how was it, it? Like small goals or? Small goals, yeah. 1v1. Okay. Meanwhile, we're I, doing a bleak test. I'd like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> English. England are doing, we're, yeah. doing fitness. we're doing fitness of England. <laughs> did, you, did you used to do things like that in the squad? Like, you know, what, what were some of the fun activities that they used to get you to do? Uh, some coaches, uh, I mean, in different clubs, but in the national team too, when they want to disconnect from the pressure they do like maybe a basketball game with the mm. I, I saw actually the spanish national team doing that yesterday i think they went to a gym or something like that and they tried to put the ball in the basket with the feet and just silly games like that that makes you relaxed because uh, i think the preparation for a game like that can become very nervous so uh doing things to disconnect i think it, it helps more sometimes than over analyzing and mm. over preparing yeah. they they gave they gave the england team ed sheeran turned up and uh, you know and they've they've played golf with ian poulter was there any fun activities that they did with the, you guys i'm trying to imagine like like did the spain team go out and have like a paintball match before uh, that final you know one thing that we did and and i think that was the key for winning everything the night before every game we went a lot of players we went to uh pepe reina's room and he always ordered hot chocolate and croissants <laughs> and, and the doctor was not happy about that <laughs> but because we started winning so much after eating hot chocolate and croissants the night before we did wow. it we did it for the whole time so the night before um we were all there and very man i was 22 23 24 and everyone was there and they were telling the stories about their teams their mm. players and and i was like just eating my croissants and listening and learning wow. and and that was very nice like it's a nice we had a nice routine was Pepe Reina like the dad? Pepe Reina was the, yeah, kind of like the, the big brother. The big brother, yeah. He was the big brother. And when we made the celebrations for the Euros, the World Cup, he was the one that took the mic and mm. spoke in front of everyone. And that's who I would have been. I would have been that guy. But yeah, but, the but, mic. but yeah. that's, yeah, I was totally. Well, Juan, I mean, we can't have you in, in the room without talking about some of the projects that you've got going on outside mm. uh, of the playing field. Um, and I understand Common Goals are a huge initiative and it's massive for you. Just uh, elaborate and tell us about that, please. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, um, it's a nice movement that uh, we created seven years ago now. And yeah, we, we just tried to to fill a gap that I felt it was in professional football to try to connect football as we know it with football as a social tool for change and, and create there like a financial connection where we can provide funds for organizations that use football to mm -hmm. change people's lives. And we did it by the 1% rule. So you donate 1% of uh, your, your A minimum wages. of 1% of, of my salary to to organizations that um, use football as a social tool for change. But it's not the 1%, my 1% does do a lot. Mm. Uh, your 1% probably more than mine, but <laughs> no, no, no. not a lot. But if we put all 1% together, we can make a lot of change. And so, it's just to try to create the reflection on people that we can live with 99% of what we have instead mm -hmm. of the 100%. Just 1% can make a difference. And and we, I started myself trying to get more players and we are now over 300, 350. Wow. And so we are growing a lot. And it's just, it gives you a deeper meaning of what being a professional football player is. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, we have been very lucky about playing in great teams and winning trophies but when you see the power of football around the world and we have seen it many times it's just massive mm. uh, the impact that it has in in people it transforms people's lives and for so many people is a way of living an exit mm. uh, so we we try to do that and we are still on it and very happy who, who, some <coughs> of the players that are involved have you got any names for us that we can yeah Giorgio Chiellini oh. uh, it was a funny story because when when I launched when we launched uh, I put it out in, in the public and the next day we received an email. Hi, my name is Giorgio and I love this thing. What is it? Can we, can I join? And, and the team, and it's like, is this true or not? Okay, can we make a video call? Mm. 
Next day, open the iPad, video call, Giorgio Kellini is there. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. And he's like, yeah, I love it. Can I join? So we have him, we have uh, Paolo Dybala, we have Jurgen Klopp, we have big names. Wow. But we also have uh, players that are not very known but different leagues, but they want to contribute. We have mm. a lot of women's uh, players. So it's a movement for everyone. And of course, the big names draw attention. But what we try to create is that a movement that embraces everyone, disregarding mm. what you can give, as long as you can give even your you time. You can make big impacts. Mm. For your time, yeah. Uh, Juan, it's been lovely to have you on the show, but this massive board that is in front of you right now, the wheel, needs to be spun. I feel like this is something that Pepe Reina would have in his room yeah. with, <laughs> with some hot chocolate and croissants. <laughs> for sure. Um, so whatever it lands on, you're going to have to do it. So would you please give us a spin? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Wait for it. There you go. Go on, bit, 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 bit more. Give it a good one. There, there you, you go. go. Good spin. Right. Oh. Yeah. That's a tough one. Impression. <laughs> <laughs> your mic, quit your mic, put your mic next to you. Or I can do a real further on impression. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> hey, we've actually got someone who can do. That was, that was good. That was it. That was, that was unbelievable. Oh can you do it? Can you do it? No, but well, I'm not bringing it out again, bruv. You know what I mean? You can't that's do it, it, man. No, that's it, man. That's it. That's it. Oh man, you should see Juan Mata's feet. Yeah, they're like bang, 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 bang. That's it. Yeah, Juan, give us one more spin. One more spin. Let's see. Let's see what we can get. Oh no! Last photo in your phone. Oh no! Oh no! Really? Put the so, mic. So put the mic. Bring the mic close to you so we can hear you. Wow! I'm gonna go for. It's gonna be architectural. <laughs> architectural. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Look at that. It's a lovely photo. You can show. <laughs> you can show the camera. Turn that. it around to the I camera. I've been sending this photo this morning. Does yeah, right? Oh, look at that. That's it. The Spain clobber is different gear, isn't you see it? How, you see our um. That, that tracksuit, yeah. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's like a throwback. It's like old school. I love it. Yeah, I Isn't love it? them too, yeah. It is absolutely yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, right, Juan, before you go, we need to do something. And lads, we're all going to do this. Predictions for the final. Okay. So nice. Okay. Do you have a pen? Yeah, there's pens down there. Do you want to hand them out? Juan, that's for you. Thank you. There you go. What we're going to do is we're going to write down our score and we're going to go through it one by one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Please, man. Okay. Please. You ready? Right. Is everyone written down? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to go first. Okay. Go I've gone modest. 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 Okay. Zero zero on penalties. For what? <laughs> <laughs> Close. I've gone seven nil England. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one nil or seven nil? I said no. See, that's to why we're going to lose because because fans like this do stupid stuff like this. We've got to believe, Rio. That's We've stupid. We've got to believe. We've that's got to stupid. Believe. We've got to believe. Right, I've gone. I've gone sensible. England two, Spain one, two one in ninety minutes. Okay. All right. Well, look, the man, the man that matters, literally. <laughs> I've gone. Ooh. Oh. Just the other way, two one, but in extra time. Oh, okay. So one one. And then extra time two one. That's that's heartbreak. Yeah. That that's heartbreaking, Juan. It's a hard Monday. Yeah, that, that that's a really hard Monday. <laughs> uh, but but Juan Mata, thank you so much thank you. Uh, for being a part of it today. Uh, Juan Mata on Legends Lounge. <laughs>